I'm alive. Uh, I shouldn't be. He should not be alive. This is unfucking believable. <laughs> From the heart of Trucker America, my boy Reed Coverdale, host of the Naturalist Capitalist. This is what government does. It sucks. If you think you're going to win people over by stating commonplaces, you're just selling the other part. It is about dictating every transaction that you have for the rest of your life. Mr. Potato Head. Coverdale is the guy to be president of the United States. You intimidated me with your perfect 74 staff. That was the beginning of my problems. He died doing what he loved, chasing a minor. But I'll put a 50 cal attached to my suburban. Libertarians need to get out of New York. The right. log is going to be in your house. This guy's a fucking murderer. He deserves to be in a dungeon. Get him out of that truck at night and get him into the White House. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to The Naturalist Capitalist. I'm your host, Reed Coverdale. Sorry about not getting this done last Sunday. I had to put a bunch of fires out, had to go to hell with John McCain and put out a bunch of fires, but that is all dealt with now, so we are here. I just finished up a great road trip with Eric Jackman. It was a good time. We just got back a few hours ago. It was great, wasn't it, Eric? Reed, it was highlight. I want to thank you for getting us there safely and then getting us back how many how many miles did we cover bro uh i don't know it's a thousand back and there and back i think roughly it's over so. a thousand miles we got a lot to talk about tonight but so so excited this is fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> well i'm tired i'm tired from the road man we're delirious but we had to do this we had to do it i told eric not to get too drunk but looks like he's had a few anyway so no, it's, no, it's we're, all good. Right. we're good we're good <laughs> We got Ryan Dawson back on the show. He's either a Nazi or a liberal, depending on who you talk to, who you get your information from. But yeah, uh, I mean, which is. one's more ridiculous? Honestly, am I closer to being a Nazi or a liberal? Uh, I'd say a liberal. Really? Okay. Yeah. Far left. Very far, far left. left. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts. But... <laughs> Not like I want to be a Nazi either, but you know, <laughs> at least they were masculine. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> and finally on the show, he's uh, someone I've had on the show many times. He is the lead singer from the band All That Remains, and he's also my landlord and my roommate, Phil Labont. How are we doing tonight, man? Uh, embarrassed, considering uh, what we started with. <laughs> <laughs> it only goes downhill. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm doing well. I'm doing well. <laughs> We, we didn't even get a full like five minutes in and we're like, all right, accusing people of Nazis of being Nazis and stuff. Well, yeah, it's 2022, man. That's how we do things around here. You know, that's, that's right. political discourse that passes. Yeah, I mean, liberal is just as bad. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, who's killed more people recently? <laughs> yeah. What have, right? what have you done for your, your reputation recently, right? Yeah. <laughs> least, yeah so, Eric, you and I Nazis just went... weren't giving six year olds hormones. <laughs> well, I know they, but they, they were giving. Them. Well, they, yeah, I mean, true. they were giving them gases that were worse than hormones, though. So, dude, we're fresh off the road, Reed, and and I'm I'm feeling uh, refried and fried, but it was yeah. worth it, and it was fun, and it, it was. I wanted to bring this point home to you guys. It was invigorating being with Ron Paul this weekend. Eighty-seven years old, um, probably what Reed? Five hundred people were there. You would say. Yeah, something like that. It's probably about the same size as the last one we went like, to. Like-minded people who are tired of empire, they understand what's happening. They're tired of war. They don't like what's been done in the name of the United States with our tax dollars. And uh, yeah, it, it was it was so worth it, man. It was it was an awesome trip. Yeah, we actually uh, signed someone's constitution because they were huge Four Horsemen show fans. They brought it over to us and asked us for signatures. So that was pretty cool. Do you sign um, any of these? No, there weren't any of those there. <laughs> we did have people upset you weren't there this time, though. Um, I, I DJ Cogdill. Away. Yeah. Yeah. DJ Cogdill was there again. And then this is the funniest part. We picked up Adam Fitzgerald. And I know you guys only ever see him from the shoulders up, but he's uh, he's six foot ten. And, you know, Eric and I aren't small either. And we all crammed into a 2003 Honda Civic sedan two door. Jeez. And we picked Adam up just north of New York City, drove all the way down to Washington, D.C., <laughs> and then all the way back up. It was it was a little tight, but I didn't know he was it. Ron Paul's height. Yeah, <laughs> almost. No, Ron. No, Ron was good, man. He was solid. I saw him when we checked in 
his his hotel was a few doors down from our hotel room, and I just ran him into the hallway, and I was just like, "This is going to be good. This is going to be good." And he he just remember doing, like a girl, and he was <laughs> calling knees. <laughs> he, he remembered he remembered doing Jackman Radio, and I just said, "Hey, Ron, this is going to be a great event, and we're excited about this." And let's hear. Colin McGregor the, was there. Let's exactly. Was. Let's hear about the anatomy of a police state, and, and Colonel McGregor's speech was hot fire. Reed. It was probably we were saying this on the ride. It was probably my favorite you know obviously ron's great all the time but i'd never seen the colonel speak before and i thought he was awesome yeah no he was he, awesome uh jacob hornberger whom i've you know i was kind of critical of him when he was running because i didn't think he was like focusing on the important stuff but he was he gave a great speech about war and just the state in general i was very very impressed with his speech uh jeff dice gave a good speech and then obviously Dan McAdams and Ron Paul were also also gave good speeches. Yeah, and and correct me, read if I'm wrong. Did, did uh, the Colonel he he wrote up the plans to withdraw from Afghanistan for Donald Trump, or what, what? What was he advising Trump on? Yeah, well, he was. What was it, Ryan? Like his last three months, he hired him. And yeah, about a month and a half, not much. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the last couple months, and he wrote up the orders to get him out of uh, all the way out of Afghanistan, Syria and Africa, I think. Right, Brian. That's right. And yeah, they straight up lied to him about the troop numbers in Syria. Right. And then we I just heard the uh, Afghan withdrawal. <laughs> I just heard Dave Smith talking about that today with the, on the uh, sticks, hex and hammer debate that, uh, yeah. Clint did. Clint show. Yeah. I had not heard about that at all until today. Like that, that there was, a, there were plans that drawn to basically, uh, you know, get the U.S. out of the, essentially out of the whole Middle East, right? Yeah. Which, which by the way, guys, if you haven't seen that, go over to Clint's show, Liberty Lockdown. He had a debate this morning with Sticks and Hammer and Dave Smith, and it's already got like 16,000 views. So go check Sticks, that out. Sticks and Hammer. Yeah. You know him? Yeah, I know him. Uh, he won't have me on the show, though, because he doesn't no. want to get, lose his channel. But no. um, yeah, yeah, he's known me a long time. Yep. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> I know so, all those boys. <laughs> he actually he was scared a... to death to, to platform me except for Reed and Jackman because they usually it you end up getting your channel nuked. Yeah. Yeah. The uh Sticks and Hammer, he was actually or he was a huge fan of the McCain tweet that went out from the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. Libertarian Party of New Hampshire has been drawing a lot of heat lately uh for just going really hard in the paint and not let's, asking for let, forgiveness. I feel like I've seen it's that not just tweet the somewhere before, party. Reed. <laughs> and this is the <laughs> reason we, we, had to, we had yeah. to reschedule with Phil. We originally were going to do this with Phil, what, last Sunday, right? Yeah. yeah. and right. It was, so It's not just, It's. I mean, as much as as much as New Hampshire is definitely, the New Hampshire Libertarian Party is definitely the, the ones that are really going to get, you know, swing for the fences, you know, whatever, like, no care. But the, 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 you know, Libertarian Party official has been night yeah, and day better in the days. past. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> the last couple of days they've been really putting up. But I mean, just I mean, <laughs> ever since the takeover, it's been significant, you know, and noticeable oh, yeah. that they are clearly about liberty and not concerned about uh, uh, political correctness at all. You know? Yeah, for sure. I made um, a calendar with John McCain's death anniversary, yeah. which we celebrate <laughs> every 25th. And I even sent a t-shirt extra 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 large to his daughter God. of his zombified face that said the death of john mccain and how we we're all celebrating it and every year i would tweet her crying on his coffin but uh got no attention for any of it man it i just, brought it to the <laughs> next wait a minute i Reed brought that's it back somehow, that's associated with why you can't go on so many podcasts isn't it that's attention <laughs> <laughs> that, that to me is attention i think <laughs> No, I was banned on everything beforehand, so I went ahead and oh, okay. kamikaze Twitter. <laughs> so I do want to put a, I want to play a fan made video that uh, someone put together for us. I'm sure anyone who's on Twitter has seen this, but this is from the great Dickie Walnuts, and it's kind of a compilation of all the meltdown reactions that we got for the tweet. So, uh, oh nice, here we go. Oh, <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of fuck niggas in the club tonight. Fuck them. Fuck them. But it's gonna be alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause me and my clique, we don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck. Aye, aye. Tweet that. Yeah. 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 If you want it, you can get it. Let me know. Let me know. I'm about to pop my 
Just in case anyone can't read that tower, it says Daddy's in Hell Pork Chop. <laughs> that was on Megan McCain. If you want some, come get some. Cause where I'm from, we so big on. And everybody knows somebody that knows somebody that knows something about it. And I won't ask now. Who will, where, where, why? I love you, the cameras. You don't lie, but that ain't my style. So who you gonna get? And what you gonna do? Run up on me if you want to. Hot damn pressing his homies. And he's done up in front of his mama. I'm up up the floor with him. And I can't even go and let the go go get him. I got food that'll go get him. That's the real Gotta spit it for the murderers and the killers and the thugs. They be fucking up the ballers and the dealers and the hustlers. Got me coming at you, bogus in the VI while they bumping lunch. I'm a Russian. It's a psycho nigga twisted from Chicago, rolling with the Miami nigga. We already be looking for drama if a nigga get uh, on the day of the funeral. Um, I don't see what message that provides. I don't see how, I have no idea what was supposed to be done with that. Uh, and I certainly don't think that a, a Libertarian Party, uh, local state or national affiliate should be putting that, that kind of thing out there. And like I said, Make sure you guys go, all go follow uh, Dickie Walnuts on Twitter. <laughs> I love how no one is safe. Just no one is safe. <laughs> Everybody, like everyone in the libertarian world loves Spike. And they're just like, cut his head off! <laughs> <laughs> like everyone loves Spike. Like Spike is the mo- one of the most loved people in the libertarian party. And in, in even the, 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 the associ- associated with the libertarian party. And they're just like, kick his teeth in. <laughs> Dude, it was, like if you, if you go... And you just like I know you got a blue check uh, account, Phil. So if you go to that tweet and you know how you can select just seeing the blue checks instead yeah. of everybody else, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of oh, replies yeah. on that tweet. Dude. Like, <laughs> Dude. I tell you, man, the the waves the waves that were made are real. <laughs> yeah, what, Phil, what's what, great what, is what, since he died on the twenty fifth. Every Christmas is a month anniversary of his death. <laughs> What, what did I say to you, Phil? We had to reschedule because uh, Reed's dealing with some fallout. Or, yeah. Or, no, yeah. I think I, I said, Phil, I think he's dealing. You're like, I, you think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it was it was great in, in the fact that it was like so over the line and that you just got to I, I, I got to respect that. And, and obviously, I think it's hilarious. I couldn't keep I couldn't stop laughing, but. It's terrible, and I have to disavow it, but I can't not <laughs> laugh at it because it's fucking hilarious. Hey, did you get the song I sent you with the T-shirt? The song I, I sent you a little a McCain commercial when I thought it was going to be last Sunday. It's on your oh, Skype. I'll check it out. Um, hey, while well, I'm checking that out, Eric, why don't you talk a little bit about Dark Brandon? What do you think about uh, Brandon's uh, <laughs> shift to the dark side completely over the last couple of days? Oh, I can't believe Ashley started talking about the showers. They revealed her diary, the diary of Ashley Frank. It's unbelievable. I can't believe they did it. They put it out there. It's just amazing. You know, we were we were all talking about the stuff, you know, the New York Post was censored for leading up to the election. Um, but, yeah, Brandon has gone completely nuclear. I mean, the optics that, that they were going for, Phil, it looked like Star Wars. It looked it looked like the Empire Strikes Back. It was it was evil. It was nasty. And you had him essentially calling half of our country, uh, you know, terrorists. Right. It, it, what, what did you think about it? They're semi-fascists, Jack. Semi-fascists. It looked like the, the evil um, cartoon people in the Pink Floyd video with the hammers and stuff. In the big red podium. <laughs> Semi fascist MAGA Republicans. I honestly think that it was like the best political thing to happen since Donald Trump did the Taco Bowl thumbs up. Like they're both high quality memory, like hilarious <laughs> yeah. shit. Right. Like now, granted, like the the Biden one looks ominous and shit, and it's possible that you know they're the federal government's trying to you know, kind of allude to the possibility of them being actual, you know, bringing the foot, the boot down. But I think that it was probably just someone blew it and screwed up and didn't, you know, say, holy shit, this is a terrible, 
uh, shot like before it started. Um, but you know, it, it was it was it's wonderful for the meme world. It's oh, for the, yeah, for absolutely the meme world. beautiful. Right, and then the king came back and said that uh, Joe Biden, aka Brandon, as some people call him, I don't know anything about Brandon. Say he is he is an enemy of the state. <laughs> Trump said he was a fucking enemy of the state. Came back. I thought it was back. great. Yeah. Oh, you know, we're, great. we're here for the memory of it. And that, that's that's kind of how we feel about it, isn't it, Reed? Yeah, I mean, what I'm uh, what I what I'm wondering is uh, when Trump made his response speech and said, we're going to execute all drug dealers. If that means he literally means everybody in the CIA or just some of them. I, I'm, I'm sure just worried about if he means mine. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't know what that was all about, man. The, uh, the dark Brandon speech, like I, I would, part of me thinks like maybe they've just realized they need to get rid of this guy. So they're just going to make him so unpalatable that they have an excuse to ditch him. Cause I mean, I couldn't believe they wanted to run him last time, but again, like, I mean, I, I agree with you, uh, Eric, it's going to be Kamala and Mayor Butt. Like, that's who I think they're going to run this time. Mayor but. Butt and Gavin Newsom, American psycho mm. wine merchant from California. <laughs> that dude, that's psycho. They, yeah. they, I think they want to do some kind of, you know, culmination of that. Do you really? I I think it might have been Dave that was talking about this again that, that uh, brought it to my attention. But, like, I can't imagine what they're going to do with Kamala. Are they going to actually try and run her for president? Like, she everyone knows that she's not likable i mean right everyone hates do, her do they i mean even well so i mean i expect that answer here right but like even the democrats that are like legit like partying democrats and they're like yeah I, I dig it they they do like know that like yeah she just doesn't have that charisma that presidents need right she's an idiot like, she, yeah, well, qualification I mean, was she had a brown vagina they just, it's just doing check boxes. A woman got well, I mean, up and said, "Russia's a big country." Yeah, <laughs> right. You're to, you're totally right because that's ex literally that's what what uh, Biden said. You're totally right about that. So I mean, that's fair. <laughs> they admitted it. They said they were going to do that. Um, I just don't see how they make her appealing. They don't. He's right? not going to run. Yeah, there's no, there's, I don't think there's any window for that. You know, Russia is a country, Ukraine is a country, <laughs> Russia is a bigger country, and I love the way Willie Brown's cock tasted. You know, that's, Ka that's Kamala Harris in a nutshell for you. Being a side chick for Montel Williams, being the Ooh. secondary side chick. Oh that. my God. Hey, yeah. Ryan, is this, uh, is this commercial YouTube safe? Yes. Yes. Barely. All right. I'm going to, <laughs> oh, it won't let me share it. All right. I need to figure this out more. Hold on. It won't let me play it for you. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know, Phil. I mean, even yeah, even among Democrats, I think that they know that they have to go outside of the Brandon Kamala paradigm. They have to do something different. And as cringe as California and Gavin Newsom is, I mean, he's like he's he's propped up in a lot of donor circles with the Democratic yeah. Party. And, and, and he's, you know, how awful he was with COVID and their response. He was at a winery. They had pictures of him. When he, everyone else has to be home, you're going to be home. Yeah. I'm going to be drinking wine with the donors at, at the wine cave, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, don't know what, I don't know what they're going to do. I I don't know either. I mean, I, not that I don't know. Not that I really expect politicians to be impressive or anything, but it does it does seem like the the Democrat uh, list is not like they're they're like they 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 spent all their money on Barack Obama for charisma and 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 stuff, and then all the people following now just have none. It's like. They're just the dregs of the uh, political establishment. Yeah. Um, I think the best move, if we actually want New Hampshire to secede, is to get Gavin Newsom and, uh, like, uh, let's see, Gavin Newsom and um, who was the other Lori person Lightfoot. I was thinking of? Yeah, that was, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Eat juice. She looks like a, a Maggie Cart from Pokemon got burned. <laughs> Is that wall-eyed picture real, or is that like photoshopped a little bit? You guys know the one where she's like, she looks like she literally looks like a goldfish in it. You know, she's she, uh, she looks. Just, I mean, she looks bad. She looks like uh, um, she just looks like a pug. You know, with the, the way her eyes kind of <laughs> poke out. I just think of a pug whenever I see her face. A toasted pug on LSD. <laughs> <laughs> on, on LSD, an old pug, you know, like with the gray hair. 
Yeah, like that, wa- that washed up. That like official picture of her when she was like all done up and stuff like that you see sometimes when when they use like the uh, the you know official uh, mayor pics or whatever where she had like really nice hair and she was wearing makeup and stuff. I was like, that can't be the same person. I I, I, I rarely see such a dramatic change from like every day to like done up for a picture unless you're talking about like actual like photo. She's so ugly. It's shocking. You're like, whoa, hey, man, who photoshopped that? Like, no, that's her face. <laughs> She looks weird. Yeah. She's an evil, so. racist little bit, bitch, man. I mean, she's just like, she's destroyed Chicago. Tim, Tim Dillon brilliantly said she looks like a Batman villain. She's like a mix <laughs> between does. the Penguin and some kind of sludge. She's a terrible Batman villain. Some right. kind of sludge. Her baggy clothes. Got this to work, right? well, I've been banned from Teasley, so you can ignore the link. But yeah. Okay. She's a tumor. Well, I don't PRS. know what you've been told. Oh, a lot God. of evil men always get to grow old. His planes are blowing up, his planes are going down, cutting off the power in a small Spanish town. Oh, my, my, oh, hell yes. Send more money to ISIS next. Said Gaddafi's gone, and Assad's next. I guess it's true <laughs> life comes at you fast. Let's dance with John McCain. One man's tumor in his brain. <laughs> Oh God! (laughs) I smell chlorine on the wind. Thank God for those white helmets. I I need to get one of these shirts. Home. (laughs) (laughs) The still dead (laughs) door. You, you had, see like, that advertising on something rotten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you missed the best lyrics. That's okay. Um, oh, that's it's probably enough of that. Jesus. So I didn't make the song. The song's from Sven from TRS, but uh, I nice. Israeled the song, and I did make the shirt. They got rid of my whole store. But that's the shirt I sent to Megan McCain. It's incredible. <laughs> I doubt... I'm sure somebody opens her packages for her. I doubt like she saw yeah. it herself, but well, yeah. if it's food being, it, it was it, wrapped it, in an American flag. If it's food being sent, she's opening it. <laughs> yeah, if she could smell it. She'd like that off the so if Phil, she how does that stack up with, with official tour merch? How does that stack up with all that remains? Like places he won't go, Arizona, <laughs> Vietnam. It's pretty Iraq, good. Um, <laughs> I've seen I've seen I've seen I've seen shirts that are similar to that on tour, you know. So that's that's pretty good quality. I would I would say that would make it onto most most merch merch tables and, and fit right in. We changed it to just a zombified McCain that says six simper tyrannus. It's part of our series. I got a yeah, zombie I mean, Lincoln too. <laughs> zombie <God>. Lincoln. <laughs> so a lot of people don't realize why John McCain was so bad. Like they know some people know like he voted for every war and stuff, but they don't realize that he was instrumental in arming terrorist groups and literal Nazi groups and that he bombed an American ship accidentally during the Vietnam War. And Wait, what? There's so he much accidentally shit. So, bombed an American ship? He set it on fire. Yeah. No so, shit, Ryan, give us huh? give us a kind of condensed rundown on why John McCain is such a piece of shit. Oh, man, I've done this so many times. His whole family's pieces of shit. He's from a dynasty. I mean, his father helped cover up the USS Liberty attack. Mm-hmm. The Israelis murdered 35 sailors, tried to blame it on Egypt. And they said, oh, we, oops, we did it, but we thought it was an Egyptian boat. That's why we attacked it with unmarked planes for hours and shot up the life rafts. And the, But, you know, Admiral McCain's the one that covers that up. McCain is... I have a whole chart. I'll find it for you, actually, of McCain and his stepfather and stuff and the people they were murdering and his relationships, a bunch of pedophiles, including the Lincoln Project and Epstein and the rest of it. Like it's unending. But I guess he's best known for obviously uh, being one of the architects for the second Iraq or both Iraq wars, actually, and Syria and sanctions on Iran and meeting with Ra'al al-Sham in Syria and taking. I know this guy. These are good people like. Every, like if you wanted to be right on a situation, just do the opposite of John McCain, except for one <laughs> issue. He was against torture right? because he had he been tortured, tortured himself in yeah. Vietnam. And I always say this, like I, I've called the, I don't usually say the Vietnam war. I just say the war of helicopters and heroin, but I will <laughs> never forgive Vietnam for returning John McCain five times. <laughs> 
<laughs> if they just did him in, <laughs> but he's the Admiral's son, so he's always valuable. And supposedly he crash landed five times and they captured him, they tortured him. So he was against torture. So that's what made him the maverick. Like he disagreed with other neocons on one thing don't torture people. But then they got around that saying, well, it's not really torture if you call it enhanced interrogation. And they're not really prisoners of w, uh, POWs. They're uh, enemy combatants. So right. they're no longer POWs. They're not prisoners of war. They're enemy combatants. And so the hell with the Geneva Conventions. We use semantics to get around that. Just like Obama got a Nobel Peace Prize for reducing the number of nuclear weapons because he decided instead of counting warheads, he would just count one sub or one plane as one weapon. And then on paper... Yeah, we have less weapons now. We don't, but he got a peace prize for it anyway. I gave it to him his third day in office, and he's already bombing Pakistan. Like right after he got inaugurated, had a party, bombed the country. And that's why I was like offended by being called liberal. I'm like, they made slavery great again in Libya. They murdered hundreds of thousands of people there, put sanctions on Iraq that murdered over half a million kids, and then they invaded Iraq again. And then yeah. joined them on that. And then the Syrian war, that was also Obama and, and Biden. And, Ukraine coup that was Obama and Biden. So like the things that liberals are doing, they are they are also murdering kids, uh, and creating slavery, starving people, and torturing people. And the Republicans right. do shit in Abu Ghraib and you know. We right. need when you say when you, when you when you say uh, um, liberals, do you think of like what people like? Do you think of like neocons, or do you think of they're the same thing? Like six and one half a dozen of the other kind of deal or neocons origins were from trotskyite leftists but i wouldn't call neocons liberal they're sort of their own brand of like cold war meets zionist train wreck <laughs> they're, they're, the, <laughs> they're the worst <laughs> <laughs> so neocons are worse than liberals marginally worse yeah yeah except for with okay. children like at least they they stopped at child abuse i mean they both kill kids but it's only liberals that are giving them chemical lobotomies and stuff but you know it's yeah. funny to me because they're all like you're not science you're not science no you're not science they say okay so you're gonna say you can have a pregnant man but like for how long have we had virgin birth like neither one make any fucking sense they're like no it was a miracle like okay pregnant men whatever virgin birth <laughs> How is one any less sciencey than the other? So, Phil, Phil, I wanted to ask you. So, what, one yeah. of the things, Phil, I love about you is just how outspoken and based you are. You know about politics and what you believe in. Um, you know, in the music industry, what, what kind of reaction do you get, and do you see or know any of your peers who are not afraid to be as outspoken in, as you are? There aren't a lot of people that want to touch the touch subjects that are volatile, honestly, and. I don't blame them and I understand why. Um, I have no problem with people that avoid politics. If, if you're a musician and you're not interested in talking about politics and you want to avoid that, completely understand. I personally avoid that in certain arenas. Like I don't talk politics from stage. I don't talk politics on my Instagram page. I don't talk politics when I stream on my Twitch page. Um, on Twitter, I talk politics and everyone kind of knows. Um, so I get it that people don't, there aren't a lot of people, uh, that agree with me and they're the handful of people that do tend not to agree with me from a libertarian perspective. They tend to be agree with a left leaning perspective. So they agree about things like civil asset forfeiture or, or uh, um, um, <clears throat> left leaning topics, you know, uh, reforming criminal justice reform and stuff like that. You know? So there's not a lot of brave people because it's not profitable to be brave. Yeah. What do you think about rage against the machine, like raging with the machine over the last couple of years? That's been pretty interesting. Well, I mean, they're raging with the machine because right now I feel, well, my interpretation of it, my impression is they're raging with the machine because right now the leftist influence in the bureaucracy and in the government is so strong. Um, they're 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 right at home with with that type of government and and stuff they were never anti-government they were anti-america they were anti-american government so if and if you're if well there's plenty of legitimate reason to be anti-american government so fine but if you're just a commie that's against america because you're a leftist then i don't think that i don't i'm i just don't i don't 
I don't know. I, I just don't dig on that when you're just against America because you're a leftist. If you're going to go ahead and be critical of the U.S. because of the things that U.S. Is, the U.S. has done or, or because of policies and stuff, that's fine. But if it's just like the the leftist, oh, we're not in charge, so America's bad kind of deal, then I think it's just, you know, they're just looking to for power. So. Right. Right, and the, they aren't even communists. Like they don't really want to get rid of private property, not their own. They just say they're communists because that seems yeah. like anti-American position to have. I think that's true too. I think anti-American is so uh, so strong in in that kind of world, like the the Hassans and the Vosh's and the bread tube and the Rage Against the Machine kind of, you know, E six kind of, you know, leftist kind of world that they they inhabit um i think you're right ryan i think it's more just you know oh it's cool to be anti-american more than actually really understanding marxism or or you know the anti-war uh, you know. movement in for the second iraq war it was more of an anti-bush thing than it was an anti-war mm -hmm. they didn't care about going to how that we went to war they cared about how we went to war and the whole argument between Kerry and bush was whether it should have been multilateral or or unilateral Yep. Not the fact that it was all based on lies. We had no business being there. That didn't matter. Yeah, so I've, I've, I, I think the uh, the same thing, a similar thing, could be said about uh, the opposition to the Vietnam War in the '60s. I think most of the reason that the people in the U.S. that were against the Vietnam War is not because they were anti-war; it's because they were against war against communist countries. You know, I so. think they didn't want to be drafted. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably true too. Yes, that was a lot of it. Fair, fair, fair. Absolutely. Yeah. But, they didn't yeah, mind you, in Latin America and all that because they didn't have to do it. But when it was Vietnam, they wait. I have to pick up a gun. Oh, I don't like war now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting seeing who's really anti-war uh, versus who's been kind of branded as anti-war. Like with Ukraine, <laughs> it's been extremely eye-opening. You know, you had these people like Rokana or. Um, you know, Bernie Sanders or whatever, who tried to act as if they were anti-war because they did want to end support for the blockade in Yemen or whatever. But then when push comes to shove and the Democrats are heavily supporting a war, literally all of them vote to send $40 billion to Ukraine. And then most of the Republicans, too. Um, <laughs> and it's they were against it's, Yemen for nine years. It wasn't until... Uh, Russia Saudi Arabia was, yeah. was going to buy weapons from Russia. Then they're like, "Whoa, they're anti-Russian." Trumped everything else. Exactly. And even Roger Waters, like he's a he's yeah, against okay. the war now, but he was a Roger. pro Nazi, pro Ukraine guy, as you know, because he was saying that at the conference. And we had red pill him on that. And now he's done a 180. And now he's on a list That's as true. an information terrorist, right? Oh, right? Even he, he was so. Even Max Blumenthal was against Syria in the beginning. Now he's one of the best people on that topic. <clears throat> didn't start like that so a lot of leftists just pick their position based on like what are other left is doing right, right. They, they don't get the data or the information it's just like whatever is anti anti-us or whatever uh without even looking at it now those two came around and yeah. they're doing great now but you can see like here's a very intelligent two very intelligent people that just totally got it wrong uh because that was the leftist position even there's a lot of palestinians that are anti-assad just because he's an alawite and they're sunni it's just tribalism. Like, wow, you really just shoot yourself in the foot, don't you? Right. Yeah. The um, <clears throat> the people who are just like anti-war regardless. Like, I mean, I don't like China at all, but Pelosi going over there and stirring up this hornet's nest and I mean, West to, yeah, <laughs> doing all these fucking drills in the South China Sea and shit. It's not like I want the United States to be more like China or something or I sympathize with China. But I have no interest in getting in between Taiwan and China right now. And anyone who cares about people in Taiwan shouldn't want the U.S. military like doing drills there right now. Just like with Ukraine, anyone who gave a shit about Ukrainians, they wouldn't have wanted us to be building up arms on the border of Poland and, you know, supporting them bombing Donbass and everything. Because look how it turned out for the people in Ukraine, you know, like in the end, imagine Russia putting a base in Ireland. How would England feel? Yeah, probably right. not very good about well, it. Or, or <laughs> what if they put missiles in Cuba? What would we do? We don't have to guess, do we? Yeah, that's a real hard <laughs> one. Yeah. You get the Kennedys to deal with it. <laughs> you get the Kennedys to deal with it. You get the Kennedys to deal with it is what we would do. I just replayed New Mac yesterday. Uh, I I get mad at watching my own film sometimes. Like, man, I wish he'd lived. Like, everything would be different. But 
oh well. But uh, talking about West Taiwan, um, do you know what 5chan is? Yeah, I think it's like, like 4chan, right? It's like the Japanese 4chan. Yeah. And <laughs> my son put a, my son is the best troll ever. He's 13, so that's okay. He put a, a clip of Donald Trump calling it the China virus. And he's like, <laughs> hey, stop calling it the China virus. It's West Taiwan virus. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's not West Nile, it's West Taiwan. <laughs> Forget about West yeah. Nile. We don't, we don't need that. It's, it's, West, it's, it's West, West Taiwan. Very receptive to anything bashing. Mm -hmm. so. uh, and nice. vice versa, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't know why something happened. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Lord, it's West Taiwan. So, virus. what are things like over there right now, Ryan? In Taiwan, like it seems to be pretty hot from what we hear over here. Yeah. Yeah, can I spurg on that for the second? Or? Absolutely, go. go ahead. All right, so when the, the Pelosi spider lady, whatever, came, first of all, like, South Korea wouldn't even meet with her. Not the president, the vice president, nobody. They, like, uh-uh, you, you don't exist. But she went to, um, to I had a joke I'm not going to say, but I'll skip that. But when she went to Taiwan, it caused a lot of problems. And officially, in like, a lot of the papers and stuff saying, oh, we're trying to put some sanctions on this type of fish and some citrus fruit and whatever. No, they sanction everything because they have live action military drills for about a month. And so no ships could leave harbor at all. So they were in a complete lockdown, like worse than the Rona. They couldn't have any international trade in their islands. So that's all their trade. They couldn't move. And they even fired five missiles landed in Japanese territory, which did not sit well with the Japanese because what's happening in Japan right now, which I don't like, is you know, Shinzo Abe was assassinated with a potato gun in Nara. Right. Uh, kind of a potato gun or a ghost gun, whatever you want to call it, zip gun. Uh actually knew the guy. Tetsuya. You guys should outlaw guns there. You know, that might help. Yeah, that would have done it. Yeah, and, and you should make murder <laughs> illegal too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, dude, if if guns were readily available in Japan, all the politicians would be dead. It's, that's what I, I laughed about is, uh, I mean, it's that's not funny that she's obviously got assassinated, but I mean, kind of is, but <laughs> it's not. <laughs> we were talking about dressing up as a zombified Shinzo Abe for Halloween and going to Shinsai Bashi. I think he'd be dead in two seconds, but um, it, America's got millions of guns and all they do is shoot each other. Japan doesn't have any guns and they build one and kill the former prime minister. You know, if they had guns here, they'd all be dead. Because people here have just dropped out of politics. It's a one-party system. It's been the LDP for like 55 years in a row, right? But when when Abe died or was murdered, it was the day before an election. And so what happened was when he got killed, everything shifted even more right-wing. It was going to be right-wing anyway. It always has been. That's why Japan's a functional country. But it went too far. Like the bring back the emperor and rebuild the military type far, right? And then Pelosi does this stunt in Taiwan. And then China starts firing in the Japanese sea. And there's no one here to say, cool it, right? You've got the most right-wing right Kishida government that Japan's had since the 40s. Uh, Xi Jinping's got an election, which I think he'll probably win this October, right? He'll get a third term, 10-year terms. That's, so that's for life for him, Pusan, whatever you call him. So he'll wait till after that to make any drastic moves. But I don't think China wants war with Taiwan simply by the fact that they were this close to taking it politically anyway. And there's because there's a pro Japan party and a pro West Taiwan party. And the pro Japanese party barely won last time. If uh, China just bides its time, they're one or two elections away from reunification without firing a shot. So the only party that's really interested in shaking that up because they see that's coming. They see this is the new Hong Kong and there will not be dual governments. Right? China's full of shit uh, is America. Right. So they're the ones that are now sending their boats through the strait and just provoking the panda bear over and over again. And that will not end well if it does turn to a hot conflict. It really all depends on how in Japan is because alone um, besides the submarines no flotilla in the world can beat land versus water. I mean, the land always wins and uh, China will sink whatever the U S can throw. And with the level of incompetence of our guy, you know, if you want, if you think gas prices and shortages are bad now, wait till China says, okay, 
we can deal with it longer than you can. It will cripple the U.S. Every shelf will be empty. They don't have to fire a shot. They can beat us economically, no problem. And that can, and you're not going to get it from Russia. You're not, and then they've got bricks. I mean, it's just so stupid to be flirting with a war with China. It should be common sense. But they think they're playing chicken. Like we're going to send our boats. We're going to look tough. And that's they. They all concerned with looking tough to one another. They've got that George W. syndrome. Whatever we're looking, we're going to look badass. We're going to challenge the Chinese. Like why? Why? Yeah. Five million people in Taiwan. 300 million people in the United States. You should work on it politically on keeping Taiwan. There's a very pro Japan party in Taiwan because when the Japanese colonized them, there are positive aspects to colonization. I know that doesn't sit well with a lot of people, but they basically eradicated disease, set up their healthcare system, all their railroads, all their school, all their infrastructure. Everything was built by the Japanese and they didn't want them to leave. Um, and they sort of retained that power. I mean, Shanghai Shek trained in Tokyo. He's Chinese ish. He's, you know, Japanese ish. <laughs> <Chinese -ish. You> know? <laughs> and there's other islands they have too, the Matsu Islands and others that are like part of Taiwan that people forget. And China could take those. That's a more realistic outcome is gobbling up. It'd be their own Crimea or whatever. But it wouldn't <gasps> be session, it would be by force. So it's very different. You can't compare this to Ukraine. Ukraine attacked the Donbass. Sure. Ukraine was attacking ethnic Russians. And so parts of their nation seceded. Taiwan has never attacked China. I mean, well, they have, but not since <laughs> World War II, not since the 50s. So this is super different. Uh, this would be China being the aggressor and it's being provoked by the United States. And I don't blame China. They don't want the U.S. having an unsinkable aircraft carrier right off their coast. I mean, but that's why they built islands in the Spratleys, because if you have an island, they cannot catch up with the U.S. naval force, but they can defeat them with land batteries. You, you ships don't fight forts. That's just been the rule yeah. of the Navy for centuries, right? So um, they built man-made islands. They stuck their guns on there and said, now what? Totally negated like billions in spending by building islands. Pretty genius move. Uh, yeah, the thing is, like, I mean, obviously you have zero love for China. You're calling them West Taiwan. And I don't like China culture. I don't like communists. Yeah. I would like their SEZs, though. I, I wish the U.S. had some special economic zones, but whatever. Yeah, but, you know, Doug McGregor gave a really good speech uh, at the um, event this weekend, and he's not a libertarian. Like, lots of people think he's a libertarian because he's so anti-war. He's not. He's a nationalist, like, populist dude, but he's america first like actually america first not israel or taiwan first like he says you know <laughs> going to war with china is not in america's interest i mean he laid it out just like you did that especially with our current military and our current uh economic problems if we went to war with china it would sink us and it would be a disaster but a lot of even like the maga republicans have this like they still have this George Bushism about them, about being tough and showing our enemies, you know, we mean business or whatever. And I don't know. It's just too bad. What do you think, Phil? I think that I am entirely too ignorant on uh, China, Taiwan, and Japan to make any type of uh, coherent uh, contribution that's worth a crap. Well, war with China sounds bad, even if you don't know anything. Well, I'm... Yeah, I mean, that, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. literally, China has a billion more people than America. They're 1.3 billion people, right, in China, something like that. So, like, okay. the, going to war with a, a country that size with that many people that has that much resources, uh, I mean, it's just a, a, a terrible idea, especially considering there's nothing to gain for the U.S. Like, there's no, there's no positive about about a, about a war with china like there, there is i don't see we're not going to take portions of china and i don't think that we have any interest in in or i don't think that there's any interest in the u.s having uh actual military bases in in taiwan uh so there's no there's no positive at all i, I can't see strategic positives i can't see any kind of geopolitical positives it's just all bad thumbs down bummer bullshit that, that's uh, Colonel McGregor's posture read. I mean, did you get did you get that sense from the conference? I mean, seeing him oh, was yeah. so refreshing. This is a guy, man, who's who's 
his experience is, is unbelievable. And, and he, he had some balls saying what he said. And he's open about what he believes and who he is and what his dealings were like in the military. But he's, like, honest about, dude, we cannot go to war with, like, China and Russia. That's insanity. Yeah. Yeah, while you were gone, I made that exact point about McGregor. Oh, like, sorry. No, 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 you're good. Well, that just proves that <laughs> that was true. Well, it proves you're listening. Right? You're both listening to the man. It's, um, yeah. They're yeah. playing a dangerous game because – even there are people like William Burns and there, there are people in the U S who aren't retarded. I uh, can't say much for the Biden administration. They just forgot it, uh, whatever, but <laughs> they're playing this game where they don't really want a war with China, but they want it to be plausible enough to sell weapons to everybody. And right. that's part of the reason. One reason that South Korea wouldn't meet with Pelosi is because they're arachnophobic. Uh, but the other reason is they're landlocked to China and North Korea. And that's just a bad move. Like Korea will sit this out and you'd need them. I mean, that's um, <clears throat> that would give them the edge and the land base, but they're not Korea would be destroyed first uh, in a war if they allied with Japan and the U.S. in this mess. And it's just nothing good would come of it. But they want to make they want to build more boats. Right. They want to sell some of those useless F-35s. And they are. Uh, and so they saber rattle and kind of yeah, poke it with China and China looks at the same way. Like we get to build more boats and we get to sell right. more guns. We don't really want to go to war with America, but we got to make it look plausible so we can sell more military gear. I hope that's all it is. Just a bunch of profiteering because as nasty as that is so much better than actually going to war. But the problem is when you play these games, when you play chicken and both sides think, ah, oh, he'll move. And then what if they don't? We're playing chicken on a tricycle versus a freight. And it's just going to, I mean, yeah, China can't attack the U.S. either. They'd get it annihilated. But we do not have that level of projection to fight China in China. Uh, anywhere yeah. else, the U.S. could take them, but not it's not true. on their home turf. It's true. And, and this is why I'm, I'm a fan. And, Phil, you're pro you could probably back me up on this. America's soft power with, with culture and what the things that other countries around the world like about the United States Music's part of it. Sports is part of it. You know, movies, that kind of stuff. So when you've traveled, you know, with, with your band and, and going all over, I assume you've done stuff overseas and in other countries and stuff. What kind of response do you get and where have been your favorite countries to tour with your band? Well, I mean, when it comes to touring, I mean, um, I'm a fan of Japan uh, and, and it's, it's convenient that, uh, that happens to be a topic of, uh, the conversation tonight out of all the, the places that I've gone overseas, Japan's the coolest, uh, the culture's cool. The, the, it always seemed like, uh, you know, the country in the future I, the first time that one of my friends went to Japan, this is like 2000, 2000, 2001, right. Uh, maybe something like that they go over there and, he, and he, come, he comes back and he's telling me he's like dude it's the craziest thing this kid took a picture of me with his phone and then he emailed it to himself right then and there and it was like you know it's like crazy that's so blah blah, blah. and so that and that's always the impression that i've had of japan is like this kind of like futuristic uh culture and stuff and so it's it's definitely my favorite place to go uh internationally uh this is probably unpopular but i like russia and there's a particular person in russia that i like <laughs> um there's uh there's some places in the uk that i like uh germany's cool um japan's definitely my favorite though mm -hmm. and i think other countries appreciate when america exports talent and culture and interesting things and entertainment as opposed to bombs and occupation and militarism yeah yeah, I mean, you were alluding to that, and that's it's true. I do think you're right. But considering, you know, we are talking about China, you know, the idea was that we were going to be able to open up markets with China, and that would make China less authoritarian and, and less communist or whatever, and that hasn't panned out. So whereas I do think that it's good to, uh, to try to export your culture and stuff, I don't think that it's it's – reasonable to expect that you're gonna always be able to do to a country what blue jeans did to the soviet union if you, if you kind of pick up what i'm putting down you know no, no, it, totally we, we can't expect them to want it but if it's welcomed or if it's invited which obviously your band was invited overseas, sure sure yeah there was a market for people overseas who wanted to see 
your band and everything. Um, you know, I think about Dennis Rodman with Rocket Man in North Korea. You know, I know it's silly and it sounds ridiculous and trite. Yeah, ping pong diplomacy. But I mean, I will support that every day of the week as opposed to dropping bombs and murdering people and sanctioning a country. Um, I'll take Dennis Rodman with his pink hair and a dress that my daughter Ivanka made, you know, going over there. (laughs) As opposed to to, to killing people. And, you know, one of my good friends has been to North Korea three times. And he said the North Koreans are just as fascinated with the Americans in our sure. way of life as we are to learning about them. Haven't the North yeah. Koreans like seen pictures of tables full of food and European and uh, European countries in America have been like, whoa, what the heck? Like we've been told we were, you know, the richest people on earth or whatever. Isn't there like a heavy amount of lying that takes place that makes them think, yeah, things are the best here and finding outside influence actually I'll just, I'll just say, North right? Korea or I'll just say this. There's, there's, no, yeah. there's not many North Koreans who are fat like this. I'll just say that. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. That's what Malice says. Yeah. There's one. He's, He's, a, guy. Cool He's election, a guy who's got too. the nukes. <laughs> right. Like they had a lot of enemies in Asia, but people like Super Mario and people or Zelda or whatever. They like the Toyota, the cars, the cameras, the martial arts, the anime, like all the cultural exports give people a like a warm feeling about japan even Mm -hmm. in korea and china and places that you know they annexed and and butchered and likewise you know they like the k-pop and line and squid game and all the korean stuff like the japanese are using their apps and samsung and so on so that that's what's gotten the younger generations to sort of uh put the past behind them is trade business um, as libertarians like peace and trade, trade and cultural exchange uh, humanizes people. And it doesn't always right. work, like Phil said. Like, oh, here's your blue jeans. We don't care. You know, but um, they'll take it. You know, it's gotta. You gotta find what's a niche. You know, Disney's been very successful, but I think Super Mario is behind Superman and Mickey Mouse, the most recognized character in the world. So they're not bad for an island of 120 million. Yeah, it's not bad at all, man. Mm-hmm. Japan's fucking cool, man. They got fucking cool shit going on over there. There's they every time I go to the US, I feel like I went back in time. <laughs> yeah. Like every time sense. I visit, I'm like, what? You can't do this? Yeah. What? I can't yeah. just walk around and have Wi Fi everywhere outside. Why not? Yeah, you're like I was just in a third world country. It's called my country, the United States. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every 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 report back when you get back to Japan from America, you're just like Fucking third world countries, America. They still haven't I, let up on the the cuckery with COVID, though, right? Or did you, do you still did you have to get a test this latest okay, time to go back? Or are they need, done with that? I needed a PCR test to get back, but the reason, the whole reason they're doing the COVID theater is it's a pretext to not allow Chinese tourists into Japan. Uh, Everyone <laughs> here is willing to put on a mask now and then if it means no, like none of no my friends Chinese. can come, none of my family can come, and no Chinese people. Worth it. Because <laughs> there's no lines. There's no idiot tourists. Like any time a bicycle's stolen, any time someone's peeing on the street or just it's a foreigner every fucking time. And 50% of these foreigners. Like, my bike's been stolen twice, both times as a white guy. And they're like population 0.001 or whatever. And that's who did it. The Chinese are to you guys like the mass holes are to us. You know, uh, Phil's all right. He and, and Eric, they both migrated a long time ago. But yeah, Phil, you know, we're the, both Massachusetts natives, right? You were born down there. Yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah, born a long time ago, though. I, w- I was born in Framingham. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> the mass holes. We, we're, we're we're okay to admit it's like that. New Yorkers going to uh, New Hampshire or something. I don't know. Hey, at least I came up here and bought a shitload of guns. So. Most, can yeah. can confirm, yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so we <laughs> can confirm uh, down at like like halfway up the driveway. We have these mannequins for Target, and after the IRS hired eighty seven thousand more agents, I told Phil we should order some IRS shirts and put them on the mannequins. So if the IRS ever shows up at our house, they see the mannequins with the IRS shirts for Target practice, and maybe they'll turn around and go the other way. I usually know. see but, this in my window and turn around. Dude, does that mean anything in Japan or do they not care? In the US, it usually means gun owner. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you know, in Japan, they don't have that stigma of like, like a Yankee fight history. They they get the actual history, and so they don't have a, a problem with it. The U.S. Mm-hmm. didn't have a problem with it either until like the 1990s when HBO started doing a series on skinheads or something. It was in pop culture. It was in Dukes of Hazard. It was in WWE. It was all over the place and totally accepted. Just, and then just the other day, I'm sorry to cut you off. There was there was someone that was uh, in the libertarian sphere that uh, put up that picture of Tom Woods from the 90s when he was uh, at yeah. the uh, that thing, and I was just like, "You're such a piece of shit." I, I apologize, Ryan. Go ahead with what you're saying, but that made me think of it. Well, what's the Tom Woods up. picture of? He's he's there's Confederate flags. He's talking to. Legion of the South or something. I forget who he's talking to. I forget the name of the yeah, group. He, but. He's got a full head of hair, so it's like a million years ago. <laughs> Ron Paul defended the Confederate flag with a giant Confederate flag behind him. There's nothing wrong yeah, yeah. with it. There's nothing wrong with the battle flag until what they did was there are racist Southerners and Northerners, you know, that have that flag. Just like the Klan has the cross. They don't speak for all Christians, though. But yeah, they have a cross, I guess. And uh, technically, they're Christian, like believe in Jesus and stuff. But they don't get to own that symbol. And battle flag is a veteran's flag. I mean, you had 300,000 uh, people die defending their homestead. And that's what it had always been. And was never considered like, oh, you want slavery or something, which is stupid since six northern states also had slaves and kept them long after the war until the 13th Amendment and the capital they weren't fighting about that but it sort of they changed the history they started just like oh yeah they whitewashed it and they made everything about race everything everything world war ii is just about saving the jews nothing else was going on right like which is ridiculous yeah we turned they, the ship they, of they jews around everything in, world war in the race because <laughs> yeah. it's called presentism if you want a, a term that historians use they take the problems of the present and project them onto the past. So whatever is going on now must have been what everybody's fighting about forever. And it just wasn't the case. I mean, Lincoln Lincoln invaded. That's why you got... No, the South didn't attack the North. It was the other way around. And people fought because there's an army and a navy attacking them. You know what I think is funny is the, uh, the Georgia flag is basically the Confederate flag, but nobody knows because they don't still? know... They don't know what the Confederate flag looks like. They so think of the Carolina. battle flag. Yeah. Or, yeah, maybe it's North oh. Carolina. I forget which one it is. One of them literally right is. Here. May 20th, bud. Oh, yeah, not even that one. The uh, the one. They seceded from Britain, and they seceded from the Union on the same day. The one with the circle of stars and the three stripes. That's Isn't that the Confederate flag? Isn't that what they... Officially one of the stars and bars. Yeah, this is the, the, the CSA flag, and then each state had a flag. Right. But this the, is battle the battle flag, flag in Northern Virginia. Right. And then the battle flag was because they couldn't tell the act like the, the stars and bars apart from the American flag on the battlefield, right? So then they started using uh, the, yeah, battle well, the battle flag. flags have a purpose. You don't have a bird's eye view like a video game. Like you can't tell what's right. going on with all the dust and stuff. And so the flags are giving directions. So you right. need something definite. And the flags, the, the flags guys. are good as long as you guys all have Ukraine flags in your bios and hanging out your window. <laughs> yeah. Reed, Reed and I, Reed, how many Ukraine flags did oh you see God. coming up home today from Virginia? We didn't see. We, we saw some, uh, you know, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, when it, everyone, when you see a Ukraine flag, when someone has it, what's the first thing that goes through your mind? Well, I think they're just like really brave and well informed, <laughs> and they just really care about they're, human they're rights. Revolutionary. They're supporting yeah. Zelensky's cocaine habit. In yeah, yeah in it is. I see habit. a Ukraine flag, and I'm like, look, I'm okay with gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> it's shocking to me how many Ukraine flags there are, like in the random places around here. Like, I don't. It surprises me to see them like down in Hinsdale. You know, like you go across yeah. the river and there's like, you know, that cluster of like kind of old beat up houses and there's like Ukraine yeah. flags there. And I'm just like, really? Yeah. Like we that just surprises the crowd. Yeah. Next we saw him on Route 10. Yeah. It's the yeah. Mask. yeah. It was yeah, amazing. You're right. I was in, I was in uh, Vermont with my friend and we tried to stop at this diner for food because it was the only diner in the area. And from a distance, there's a Ukraine flag hanging on the outside and we're like, yeah, whatever. So then we get closer and there's a Black Lives Matter 
sign like on the window and we're like whatever okay and we get closer and there there's a portrait of Zelensky that says hope underneath it in blue and yellow <laughs> on the door and i was just like eh. and then we look inside and it's a glass door there's a cutout there's a cardboard cutout of obama <laughs> like as you walk in the door and i was like all right I can't do this. This is too much. There's I can't. a brainwashed I people. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, Twitter told you to care about Ukraine suddenly. So you suddenly care about Ukraine. Half you couldn't find it. No, didn't say anything during the coup in 2014. Didn't say anything for eight years of them attacking Donbass yep. with heavy artillery. It doesn't matter. Nothing about the oligarchs raping that country for years and years. Couldn't name a single person other than Zelensky. What they call Elinsky because they banned the letter Z. But suddenly they care about Ukraine. Just like the free Tibet crap, like during 2008, I think it was, whenever the Olympics were in Russia, there or China, I mean, there was um this upsurge of free Tibet out of the blue. Yeah. I'm like, the fuck about Tibet a week ago, right? Well, and I did this video, Kurds George too. Galloway actually reposted it. I was doing it, it was 141 people got killed in Palestine uh, and in Tibet two days apart, exactly the same number of people. No news on and Palestinians being murdered, but everybody talked about that. But that is, um, I mean, that is horrible and I, and cool that you care about Tibet all of a sudden, but you didn't care or even know until the media made it a thing and then it just went away as fast as it came. And they're already starting to forget about Ukraine and they don't know anything about Ukraine. It's just an anti Russia thing. They told the world Russia hacked the 2016 election, right? They said Hunter's laptop was Russian disinformation. Uh, and maybe the Russians killed Seth Rich. Who, who knows? You know, maybe everything was Russia. No, it's the DNC. They're laundering money through Ukraine. Ihor Kolomoisky is the one who's hiring Jean Luc Brunel, the number three man in the Epstein ring, selling little girls to uh, billionaires to get raped in the United States and Canada. Eh, yeah, nothing to see there. Burisma, I mean, look, Conrad Black's on the board, not just Hunter Biden. Scott Ritter and I talked about that, or was it Larry Johnson? Somebody and I talked about that too. That this is a much bigger deal than than Hunter. Right. Hunter's Bow High Harvest, Corn Pops Revenge. If you haven't seen it, I think I'll play that tomorrow. Actually, um, there's so much corruption and rot; it never ends. But they're worried about the borders in Ukraine and and uh, what all the old oh, Russians are. They're invading Ukraine for no reason at all. Like, wow, uh, these are twistorians, Twitter historians. <laughs> twistorians. <laughs> they just all their information is from Twitter, which bans anybody with information that's threatening to the system well it, uh, it's also Google peer pressure it. too i mean it's peer pressure in, in everyone's lives you know whether it's, it's your family your friends your peers your co-workers whoever it is it's just a domino effect of peer pressure and then you're shamed if you just dare speak out against it or say something different in counter to their narrative so yeah the four horsemen, well, what, what, what we do is a big big you know huge yeah the other thing is like if you really care about you know, stopping genocide or stopping war. I mean, we can stop a lot of war right now. We could stop, you know, we could stop supporting Saudi Arabia and Israel and we could stop bombing Somalia. I mean, there's tons of things we could stop doing right now that contribute to a lot of deaths around the world. But we are always worried about what China or Russia or Cuba or Venezuela or whatever country it is that's doing something. Only approved viewpoints may be expressed. <laughs> may be expressed yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's literally what the fucking press secretary for Joe Biden said from the fucking podium a couple days ago. What's this one? Peace, Peace commerce, commerce, and friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with yes. none. No, Mr. Yes. TJ. Yeah. But that, like, like, that's exactly the, the whole, like, the whole, like, oh, uh, people that don't agree with the uh, mainstream are extreme views. It's like, oh, if you're not with the majority, you, you're the extreme, you have uh, extreme views. It is, I, I can't believe how bad the walk back has been from the, the that freaking, uh, oh, it's this one. Look how extreme that is. is. America just, what does it say? America, America, does, not America does not go abroad. Monster to destroy. How far away are we from that? God, yeah. so far. <laughs> We're 200 years away from that, Ryan. <laughs> At least 200, probably 250. But. Yeah. 
So I wanted, Phil, I wanted to talk a little bit about Israel because you and I have talked about it and we got Ryan here. And I don't want to misrepresent your position. I know you don't want to give them any aid. You want to end all foreign aid and all that shit. But what do you? what is your view of Israel in relation to the United States and their position in the world? Just kind of give your thoughts. And then I just wanted to hear Ryan kind of respond. I don't have a whole extensive uh, history uh, of Israel. Um, my take on Israel is it exists now. I'm not, I'm certainly not going to be a person that's going to go back and debate whether or not it should have been created in, uh, in the forties after world war two or whatever. Uh, it exists now if, and it seems to me that if, if the Israeli government has Arabs and Palestinians and Israelis in it, that's a better government than one that's run by Hamas or, uh, or the Muslim Brotherhood. And if the, if Hamas or the Muslim Brotherhood had their way, they would kill all the Jews in Israel. And if it were the other way around, I don't think that the, I don't, it, it obviously it's not the other way around. And now granted, that's not the position of all Palestinians, the position that Hamas would kill, like, like I said, Hamas would kill all the Jews. Like that's, they're clearly, you know, pretty religiously extreme. Um, so that's not all Palestinians and that's not the argument that I'm making, but Hamas is the government in of Palest of the Palestinian controlled areas now. So Gaza. I don't, what is, is that right? Or am I not the government of the West Bank? It's just the government of Gaza. Uh, okay. All right. So again, I'm not, I'm not claiming to have, uh, have any kind of deep knowledge on the, on the, the, the situation. But that's about the size of my understanding. If if the Israelis are in charge, it seems like there's, you know, there's there's the boot, but it's a government that represents the people there. If uh, Hamas or or uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is in charge, then it's probably not so good for the Jews. And before so. everyone in the chat hates Phil Levant forever, I do want to back him up that he doesn't like go around saying we need to support israel he wants to end all foreign aid and all that shit so like we're on the same page so this is all just kind of opinion that we're getting down to and like historical stuff that's happened or whatever so i just wanted to back you up on that phil like a lot of people who are pro israel or whatever they're just like we need to give more money to them we need to fight every war for them whatever that is not no what phil thinks we don't about, need to so. we don't need to get into any kind of uh military actions on behalf of any other countries I'm uh, like, I'm the kind of dude that thinks that we should probably leave NATO because if we, if we yeah. wanted, yeah, if we wanted, cause if we want to align with other countries and decide that there's something going on in the world where we need to gang up on another country, like whatever, for whatever reason, you can do that without NATO. Uh, right. The behavior, the behavior of, of other countries uh, that may require us because of a treat require, us to engage in in uh, a war because they decided they wanted to slap their big neighbor uh you know that i'm not i'm not okay with that I, we can we we should be able to decide what military actions we're going to get into on a case-by-case -case basis and we should not have to get into a military action because another country got into a military action and we're in uh, in an alliance with them so yeah so what do you think about uh I know you're an atheist. All of us here, all four of us are atheists. What do you think about Zionism? Like the idea. Nah, I'm part of the church of Mill Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to reply to that later, but go ahead and read this. Uh, what do you, or you can reply to that first if you want, Ryan. If you, okay. You said. So uh, I hear this a lot and I'm not, I'm taking deep breaths and cause I do know the history and uh Commonly, people will point to Hamas and say, "Well, they're crazy. They shoot rockets." Da, da, da. As Thomas Sowell would say, starting the story in the middle, Hamas didn't exist for the first thirty-five years of the occupation. They got elected after nothing else worked, in a life-or-death situation. When the U.S. was colonizing the Americas, you could look at something and go, "Well, the Apache are a warrior society. The Comanche are a warrior society. They kill people on the frontier." Like. Yeah, I wonder why. 
what happened before? They didn't start that way. That's not how it was. That was after decades and generation of genocide and murder that they became Spartan-like for their own survival. I don't like Hamas. I don't like any government, to be fair. Uh, the PA, who has been what we call the house Arab with a boss, is not Hamas, does not fire rockets, and they are the ones getting physically annexed and occupied. Israel builds, and Israel's not the Jews. So get, and that's just like saying Saudi Arabia is the Arabs, right? There is Wahhabi Salafist extremist monarchy that runs Saudi Arabia, and there are Jewish supremacist Zionists that run Israel. So don't confuse that with an ethnic group or religion. Just no one here is, but for the audience sake, this is not what we're talking about. Israel from its inception was built by terrorism from Benak and Begin and the rest of them. Or, like, people like Albert Einstein even chastised them in the New York Times very publicly on how horrible it was what they were doing. Yet a bunch of people moved down from Europe and annexed land and colonized Palestinians. They blew up hotels, boats, embassies. Dear Yassin, they murdered 240 people, chopped their heads off, paraded people around like trophies in Jerusalem. This was a brutal, violent colonization of an area that had invited them and lived with them for 1100 years uh, continuously without conflict. Then move in the Zionist supremacists. They want Jewish only areas. And in the West Bank, they build Jewish only colonies. By law, only Jews can live there. No Arabs, no anything other than Jews. You could be a Jew from Brooklyn and you have a birthright to go over there and take somebody's house. That is the crux of the conflicts. Like the reason they're fighting isn't because of prejudice or anti-Semitism or anything like that. It's because one side openly takes bulldozers, smashes down people's houses and replaces them with a self-proclaimed chosen race of God. That's why the mad. As for Gaza, they live under a blockade. They have a calorie count and Israel routinely bombs them back into the Stone Age, bombs universities, agricultural centers, houses, bedrooms, not even military targets. They just blow up whatever they want. They attack the media centers first, usually. And so they hate them and they, yeah, they want them dead. And the Israelis are want and do that. You can't just wipe them all out. The whole world community wouldn't allow that. And that's the reason, the only reason Gaza exists at all, because Israel cannot just kill millions of people. The world wouldn't put up with it. But they do it through attrition every, every year. They're killing hundreds of them. They arrest their children on false pretexts. They have snipers shoot people in the balls and the knees and the eyes, and they get away with this stuff. And even a lot of prominent, uh, even some Zionists in the U.S. have condemned, like Alan Dershowitz has condemned house demolition. Like, yeah, not because it's wrong to bulldoze down an Arab's house and replace it with a chosenite, but because it's bad PR. They don't have a good excuse for explaining how, like, uh, God gave it to me. It just isn't a good, okay, like, look, it's in this book. It says this is supposed to be Jewish land, so I just get to murder and push everybody off of it and take it as mine for my tribe. But you see this shit all over Africa, too, where one tribe attacks another. The tribalism, it's not racism, because this is black on black, Arab on Arab, like all throughout Africa, where you have this tribe versus that tribe fighting over the land. And it's the same shit in Israel. You have a group of fanatics that feel justified because of the Holocaust and protected because of that to genocide someone else. And that, you know, Palestine had nothing to do with the Second World War. They got invaded too in World War One. They got invaded in World War Two. They were also victims. They're victims. They were under the British magistrate. They're under lived under Rome, lived under the Ottoman Empire. And these people are like, Well, you weren't your own country. They were in 1922, actually, but it's like saying Virginia doesn't exist because it's just part of the United States. It wasn't a country by itself. Well, it was a state within the Roman Empire. It was a state within the Ottoman Empire. It was a state within the British Empire. And it was even an independent state briefly, just as old as Mexico was before the Mexican War, about 11 years. But the Palestinians are routine, and it's not a, an even struggle at all. I mean, it's like F-16s versus slingshots. You have rockets with no propulsion system or warheads versus Sidewinder missiles that Israel acquired from the U.S. through theft. Uh, you have a nuclear power. The only undeclared nuclear weapons in the world are in Israel. And it's not just their butchering of the Palestinians and the land they annexed in Lebanon and Syria. It's so far beyond that. We never would have had a war in Iraq if not for these Zionist neocons who lied to us about weapons of mass destruction. The U.S. spent trillions of dollars 
fighting a country that was zero threat to them, that did not have WMDs based on lies from Israelis. They linked uh, Iraq to 9-11. They said Mohammed Atta got, uh, got anthrax in Prague meeting with senior Iraqi officials. No, he didn't. Iraq did not have anthrax. They did not have mobile weapons labs. Al-Qaeda did not have anthrax either. But somebody sent anthrax to U.S. senators, and one of them being Patrick Leahy, the Leahy Amendment, which forbid military sales to Israel because of their human rights violations. And they tried to kill him. And that wasn't Al-Qaeda. It sure as hell wasn't Iraq. But the entire Zionist media said it was, and we went to war with Iraq and blew that country apart, flattened. Fallujah, use MK-77, which is napalm, napalm 2. Napalm's illegal. The upgraded version of it isn't. Isn't that something? And that was from Israeli partisans hijacked our foreign policy. And why are we in Syria? It's not an American interest. It's in Israel's interest. And every single politician from both parties, when APAC has their meeting, they go there and kiss the ring. Except All Thomas them. Massey. He's like the... And Ron Paul, like, yeah. like all the guys running for if they're running for president, they go to APAC and they speak at APAC, and all and all the gals too. They it's the largest lobby, it's the most influential lobby, and it's not just bribery; it gets dirtier than that with blackmail, as we've seen. And I uncovered this. I was talking about Jeffrey Epstein in 2007, right? And Jeffrey Epstein was not just some billionaire with a girlfriend that went around fiddling kids and bought an island. He was part of an intelligence nexus uh, backed by Les Wexner, which goes has a long history back to the Sunborn Institute, which group of Zionist millionaires in the 50s that helped steal the atomic bomb from the United States, helped create the Cold War. Like so much of our problems uh, in the Middle East and really in the on the whole planet are from this shitty little parasite that constantly lies and steals to us and they're beyond criticism because of the holocaust they were even using holocaust charities which is a wonderful thing a charity for holocaust victims but that's not where the money went they were laundering money through holocaust charities for gun running but it would be political suicide to investigate a holocaust charity and they knew it so they knew they'd get away with it and Brian, just to uh, hard because any criticism you do about Israel is going to be met with the charge of anti-Semitism and a little bit Saudi Arabia will do that, too. They'll say, oh, you're Islamophobic, yeah. which works in Europe. It doesn't really work in the U.S. so much. But like in Europe, if you say you're Islamophobe, it's like, oh, yes, master, sit down, kiss the feet. Well, I mean, in, in Europe, it's, it, it's saying Islamophobe is the same thing as saying racist here, right? I mean, it's like saying you're, you're the N word or used or yeah, yeah something like, that. like yeah. it's just that's a conversation ender, and it's yeah. not it's not to do with Islam, um, right? I'd say Islam, Islam is Indonesia or these other countries. The Muslim is Saudi Arabia is run by a monarchy that sponsors Boko Haram and Al Shabaab and ISIS and all these horrible terrorist groups, including Al Qaeda. Uh, so did the Israelis. And they're both beyond criticism because of the deep oil ties with Saudi Arabia and the deep political ties and donor class from Israel. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, it, well, it's, it's not like they're the only people that are beyond criticism, though. No, well, those, those two are the like they're the ones like nobody else is ethnically cleansing their neighbors besides Israel. That's hard to get away with. Saudi Arabia. It, well, I mean, well, they China are starving is, Yemen. You could argue that, yeah. and this is the third and time. Yemen, yeah, yeah. And Yemen China's, doesn't have China's a ethnically climbing the Uyghurs, and lobby. you know they're poor, and no one cares. <clears throat> but, I mean, yeah. the Houthis, if they have a government that's like hell bent on fighting the Saudis, I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't they? If they have their Hamas equivalent, I'm like, what else did you expect? Are they going to talk to you? I'm like that didn't work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean like? They tried to fight that. They never had the Muslim Brotherhood, by the way. That's a problem in Egypt, I guess. But, um, you know, and a lot of a lot of Al Qaeda terrorists pointed to the Israeli Palestine conflict as justification for flying planes and buildings. Ryan, I think the Patria disaster is is a good story for great, showing yeah, that know about Zionists. Liberty. Yeah. Well, the Zionists yeah, but, don't oh, care about Jews. Jews. Yeah. Yeah, they don't give a shit about Jews. It's like again they'll murder other Jew non-zionist jews and there's a pecking order between different types of jews uh sephardic jews and mizrahi jews there you might as well be palestinians uh because the likud party has taken over 
and they blew up a boat full of Jews that was leaving Israel because they wanted to force them to remain so they could have a Jewish majority demographic. And they blew up the Patria, blew a six meter hole into it, sank it, killed 55 British sailors and nearly drowned 1,200 people. The reason those, mostly the children and elderly did drown, uh, but the ones that survived, hundreds of people died, but the survivors were picked up by Palestinian fishermen, went out and rescued them. And they turned around and colonized them. But I doubt it was the people who pulled out of the water that did that. I think it was more fresh off the boat, coming in angry about, you know, never again. And what they do, they turned around and uh, wiped out Northern Palestine completely. Wiped out Haifa, wiped out, like wiped out whole cities. And as soon as they start fighting back, there's the camera. Look at the Palestinians are throwing rocks. Mm. Well, bring in the well, tanks. Like, like you say, Dawson, it starts mid-range. They in the middle. They just start. They they, they show we are shown something, and the, and that's why you know a lot of us are in the dark about it's this. The Apache you know, raiding sheep. Why oh, are they doing that? You killed right. all their buffalo. You shot the. You murdered them like in the last five battles this, in a row. And now, this, now you start the story when they hit you back, right? Yeah. Well, this not this knowledge is uh, you have to seek this out, man. You have to first be aware that you don't have this knowledge and I'll, I'll be honest man i was so ignorant of so yeah. much of this before i read about what you said ryan what finkelstein has said um you know it, we don't the majority we don't know. of jewish diaspora opposed it like i said albert einstein a long list of prominent very well-known jewish figures in science politics around the world thought whoa whoa what's going on not in our name the thing is though they don't run the press the press favors whatever makes the most profits for the MIC. So it's a lot of greed Martin and the rest. I mean, where did Peanut get its seed money? Lockheed Martin. That's who paid for Weekly Standard and all the rhetoric, right? None of these lies. You can't just be a great liar. Like, you have to have the support. Oh, there's got to be organs and infrastructure in place. I mean, the Palestinian lobby and their think tanks and their media assets are incredible in Hollywood, aren't they? They're unbelievable. <laughs> well, Hollywood yeah, it's, started it's, by it's Jewish heavy. mafia figures. It's heavy, I mean, man. Mr. Origins Arnon, of Hollywood Arnon go Milchin. back to organized crime. Mr. Arnon Milchin. Arnon Milchin is Israel's largest arms dealer. Stuff. He's the one that that <laughs> made sure no mention of Israel is in the JFK film. And uh, Oliver Stone, Oliver Stone alluded to some of that though, Ryan, in some of the did recent he? documentary that he did. Oh, yeah, he, he did. yeah, he did, man. He was. I wish I could pretty, talk to him. He was pretty based on some of that, and he actually talked about it and mentioned it, so he didn't gloss it over and just pretend that that it wasn't there you know the, the the foreign agent labeling demona he talked about demona so that was it was very interesting to hear that there's some guy that was in afghanistan right before the war started and he was in ukraine right before the war started and i think he was in syria right when the war started i was like man can we get this guy to go to demona <laughs> <laughs> demona for those that don't know the nagav desert is where israel built its secret secret nuclear weapons program with um they had a nuclear energy the French helped them build, but they started siphoning off plutonium, uranium, end up stealing U-35 from the United States and Palo, Pennsylvania, and built so, hundreds of warheads in secret. I, I got to say, Dawson, we missed you uh, in Virginia the last couple of days at the Ron Paul conference. But Ron, man, he just hit 87 on August 20th, and he's still going. And, uh, you know, they're looking to do another event, uh, what, November, Reed, down in Texas? Yeah. His uh, birthday's November. in here. We're yeah. trying to get uh, Ryan to speak there, which would be Mondo. It's Big anti censorship conference, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. in August twentieth yeah, like, should be a national holiday, Ryan. It's happening, Ron yeah. Paul. He hasn't. And of course, he first has McCain. <sighs> so got to celebrate the heroes, demonize the villains. Heroes and villains. <laughs> yeah. So uh, LPNH made waves again today, uh, <laughs> tweeting this out. Good God. <laughs> The uh, replies God. aren't very happy. Is it trending though, Reed? Um, How's the see. trend look? <laughs> so we we posted this and then posted his link. You know, a little baby Azov, you know, the Azov Battalion, the Svoboda Party, the Stepan Bandera Group, you know, all that shit. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing but. And then you know we got all these links to Libertarian Institute, blah 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 blah. And it's nothing but people freaking out. <laughs> um, it's only shown the people I follow, but it's mostly like people with like six flags, you know, they got the Ukraine flag, the, but yeah, 
that made a lot of people mad. Um, so we're causing chaos again. <laughs> people need That's to read my Substack posts on why <laughs> Nazis would support a Jewish president and Jewish prime minister. <laughs> Well, no, that's, because that's, that's the question, like why if this that is the number is, one retort on Twitter. There is like this: there can't be Nazis in Ukraine because Zelensky is Jewish. That's like their number yeah, one. That's if people get their World War II history from movies. Yeah, there's they had a, a lot hard agreement of, with the JA those, uh, the whole time up until 1939. Nazis and Zionists worked together with the actual Nazis, right? And these, I mean, these people don't care about Jews. Zionists don't care about Jews either. And right. the Nazis in Ukraine aren't really the anti-Semitic Nazis of the 30s. They're more like Ukrainian nationalists, ethno-nationalists, Russia haters. Right. Stepan Bandera stands. <laughs> Bandera stands. Bandera did kill a lot of Poles. To steal yeah. a joke from Jeff Carr, you know, we always talk about the six million. It's horrible. People forget about all the gypsies and gays that were killed and they never talk about it because no one ever wants to talk about the positive. <laughs> oh, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Jeff Carr. I used that joke from him. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, I would hate to live in Ukraine, man. What a rough part of the world to live in the last hundred years. I would, uh, I would move, I think. I can't imagine. I really really do feel sorry for the Ukrainian people, you know. Like they're do you the get ones. To move? There. You should hear him talking about touring and like stuff they're using to cook with. I mean, it was they suffered under Holdemore, then Nazi occupation, communist occupation, starvation, and then one oligarch after another. Yeah. It's just been generations of famine and death and misery and then the exploitation is sending a lot of eastern europeans into sex traffic and finally uh an end is being put into it i don't i don't doubt for a second people in crimea wanted to join russia rather than remaining in a country with 15 billion euros in debt where the you have brownouts and the oligarchs own everything uh, you don't have a chance that's corrupt i mean there other than Maybe Nigeria, Ukraine could be the most corrupt country on earth. Or was. Nigeria is up there, though, and they're saying the snake ate the gold. <laughs> that was a real story. What excuse. happened to the gold? A snake ate it. <laughs> Another time they said monkeys grabbed it. <laughs> Phil, did you see Taylor Swift has a new album coming out? I did. I'm excited. I need, I need your take on it, dude. This is another thing that I live for, Phil. Is is it just a big you, uh, Taylor you're fan? Not, you're not. You, I, I am, am too. Yeah, Phil is. I am. I'm. You give me strength, Phil, to admit to people. She's a big I fan of Blackpink. Taylor Swift, and I appreciate her music. Taylor is obsessed with Blackpink. She put their new song "Pink Venom" on her whatever award show she was just doing, and then essentially followed them around the whole time and wants to collab with them, which I think would be great. I'll have to check them out. Uh, heard of them if you haven't heard of black pink <clears throat> band, you'll um you will be delighted oh, okay okay but, but she yeah. pop stuff yep very good cool okay. she has this way of just dropping these albums without anyone really knowing about it being stealth about it and then boom all of a sudden you know you'd think she can't shut up about her dating you think she'd be, you'd think that, that like she'd slip up when she's making a fucking record Right. And she's she's constantly talking about her boyfriends. She can't, and but like, man, she can make a record and slip that shit out without fucking making a peep. Dude, that was like Manhattan Project shit in Bohemian Grove, folks. They were there. It was top secret. No one talked about. Not even the gay <laughs> prostitutes who were there, folks. Had to murder a couple of folks, a couple of twinks that came in from San Francisco were kind of healthy. Infowars.com. But yeah, <laughs> there's <laughs> Infowars.com. There's like, uh, Phil, Phil when folklore I, drops, dude. How psyched. I mean, I was. It's a great record. I was super pumped, and it, it was cool that it was when it, you know, it came out like when there was like so, when things were so weird, you know, the flu going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The flu world order. Yeah. <laughs> so it was. It was cool. Um, I, I mean, I dig it. Folklore is a great record. Um, so I mean, I can't wait for the new one. Obviously, you know, she's so midnight, uh, at midnight around midnight. Is midnight. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what is going on in her personal life right now, but I have a 
why don't I, <laughs> you're not we a real need, fan. Uh, we need all that remains. I don't Taylor know Swift collab. We need that's the collab that I'm living for right What's now. That? What's that, Ryan? Is that is that a Taylor Swift? Stage no, set? that's the hole in the Pentagon. I was trying to get it. Spared. Oh, but it, oh, <laughs> Jesus. If, you, if, if you tried to do an album though, Phil, in like secret and not let it get out, I mean, people would know about it and people would blab about it. I think you I should think collab that, with Taylor Swift. I would do it in a heartbeat. I think Taylor Swift doesn't agree with you, and that's the big problem. Um, wow. If we wanted to, if, dance if we wanted moves. to, I have no dance moves at all, man. No <laughs> dance moves at all. Um, if we wanted to do a record and not talk about it, we could get away with it. I think. I think it'd be and put it out. That'd be pretty it leak easy. Out. No, because it like for the most part nowadays, like we don't even have like we're we're trying to get off our label. We have one. We're supposed to do one more record. And, we're trying to get off it and, and not do it. We want to put it out ourselves. Um, so, I, Jack, and should I tell them? What's that? Yeah, Taylor, she vacations to Outer Banks. You know that, right? Guess where she stays? Hatteras? Where? With us. Oh, Taylor Swift does? <laughs> no way. At your hotel? No yeah. <laughs> oh, what? Dude, we got the connection. We got the a bunch of the connection right there. She was there. a country <laughs> singer first. Uh, so, my, I shouldn't say this. I'll tell you guys after. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I, well, you know, she she collaborated on that last album, Phil, with the dude from Bleachers and um, the yeah, other guy, the other guy there from um, the National. Or uh, no, Bleachers and another there was big the dude from Panic at the Disco, I think. Yeah, they were like the producers of it and helped her write the songs. So. Oh, okay. It was, right. Yeah, it was well, it was awesome. So the reason I bring up like her her status as uh, like relationship status is. I find that Taylor Swift, like a lot of artists, writes her best stuff when she is fucking miserable. Fired up. When she's miserable. when she's not, when she doesn't have something that's going on, I don't think that it's as impactful. Um, that's why I said I she think, should collab with you. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to break her heart, but the, I actually have talked. I've, I've mentioned that I would love to collaborate with her on something, but the thing that I was thinking about collaborating with her on is a family. Um, that uh, that's not Smith a song. Metal would be cool. She, she like, was. Uh, be cool. Uh, she'd be. She'd be great. She was with RFK's she, grandson, Connor Kennedy, RFK Jr.'s son. They were. They were an item for a while. So yeah, that's I'd, and with I'd John like Mayer. That, that, that's good company. Where, Phil, uh, where, do you, where do you come down on John Mayer, Phil? I gotta ask. John Mayer's a great guitar player and he's fucking hilarious. Um, he's a great singer. Uh, he writes great songs. So I don't really have anything negative to say about him. Um, he's tall. Yeah, he is. <laughs> if I understand correctly, which is which fits for Taylor Swift. She's tall too. I have to, uh, I have to admit, man, I, I dropped my pretty much a large chunk of my tax return this year to see him at the Garden, twelve rows back. Oh, oh my no favorite! Shit. Album, I, was I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed. Pointed Phil on the Sob Rock tour. It was incredible. He's great. He Pete he, Steele. He, he completely. Right, you're talking about Pete Steele. Yeah, Good. Peter Steele. Eric, sorry. He had oh, giantism. Eric. I was yeah. I was going to say, uh, uh, John Mayer completely nicked '80s Eric Clapton for the Sob Rock for the tour for the musicians, the recording guy, uh, Phil and Gaines on uh, you know keyboards, Pino Palladino on bass. It, it was it well, was. It was amazing. Isn't Mayor was, touring with the? Isn't Mayor touring with the, the Dead fucking Company? Dead? They, they wrapped okay, up yeah. last month. Yeah, they played. Yeah, yeah, they played Gillette. But when I saw him, man, it was like, it was like a, it was a modified, updated version of '80s Clapton, and it was awesome. It was really good. Cool. The last He's record. fucking great. He's yeah. a great guitar player. Um, New England boy too. Great songwriter. New England Where's boy too. Uh, Connecticut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, fuck Connecticut. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there, uh, there's Bridgeport. I He's originally I, from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Ooh, yeah. The chat's out. giving love to typo negative right now. <laughs> that's a tough one. But yeah, no, it was worth it. If you if you've never seen him, Phil, I, I, I that was my third time seeing John Mayer, and it was it was worth the money and the trouble going to the garden. And it was it was awesome. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen seen uh, John Mayer. Mike, our guitar player, seen him a bunch of times. Um, Mike's a big John Mayer fan. Yeah, he's and, awesome. and it's hard not to be if you're uh, if you're if you appreciate guitar players. It's hard not to be. Who is the he's goat? Really great of guitar players, if, if there's such a thing. In my opinion, it's Eddie Van Halen. Van Halen. Yeah, uh, at least for rock yeah. guitar, Van Halen's guitar tone is still the guitar tone that people chase after. So his brown sound, 
um, of his, I think it was in 1979 or 78, JCM 800 that was modded. And back in the day when they would mod them in LA, they were mod, like the guys were like protecting the mods, like they were protecting a secret sauce. Like they didn't want to tell you what they did inside it. So that way only that amp had that sound. So that guitar player was the only guy that had that tone. And Eddie Van Halen did that with the brown sound and then everybody was trying to copy it. And then, you know, that's, that's still the metal tone that you go after. And then his playing was also completely revolutionary. You know, his, his guitar solos and his, his playing style and, and the fact that he was as clean as he was, like it was, He's just he he changed guitar in my opinion, um, and you know then went went to write went on to write some of the biggest hits of the '80s. So that's when you ask what happens it, to yeah. the edge if you take away his effects pedal. Ah, uh, yeah, no, the edge is is just a guitar guy that plays guitar. Uh, is not he's not Eddie Van Halen. But exactly. When you're comparing people to Eddie Van Halen, almost everybody is just a guy that plays guitar compared to Eddie Van Halen. There's like. You know, a few hundred guitar players that ever have existed that could be, you know, in the in, brought up in the same breath with Eddie Van Halen, and considering a few hundred out of all of them that have ever existed, that's pretty, pretty slim pickings, you know. So uh, Eric's going to fall on his face asleep chat. here soon if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if you shackle chat, I'll read your argument. Yeah. So uh, Eric's about to fall asleep on his computer if we don't end this soon. So uh, Phil, why don't you uh, why don't you just close this out? I remember when the Ministry of Truth was instated, you were you know banging on the door of the you know all musicians and singers and yeah. everything, saying like, "What the fuck, guys? Like all of us should be you know in in solid resistance to this." Do a metal um, version of Shake It Up. Have you like wow. seen anyone <laughs> have you seen yeah. anyone like kind of answer your call to that? And what's your point no. of them now? What's your point of them now? No. What's your message to them? No, you're all cowards. <laughs> you're, you're all you're all cowards or your shit lives. <laughs> That's bad. I want to see the metal version of Swift songs. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, well, there's the, the I, pre I prevail yeah, really knocked it out of the park when they did. Um, uh, what's the name of the song? Um, you know, Ryan Adams oh, did, did a whole album. Disturbed did well with Sound of Silence. Song of Silence. Disturbed did, dude. That's a great, that's a great, that's a great song. And, and Dave Draymond's a great singer too, though. Like he's really, really, really talented. Um, why can't I think of the name of the song that that uh, I Prevail did, the Taylor Swift song? It's the song that put him on the fucking map. Was it Last Dance with John McCain? <laughs> no. <laughs> Last Dance with John McCain. Um, I spilled the napalm on the wind. <laughs> anyway, so, but yeah, I, I can't remember. But, but there's there's a couple bands that have done some Taylor Swift uh, heavy songs and are heavy versions. And they come out good because Taylor Swift writes great songs. You know, I mean, if you... My my thoughts on like genre. She attractive though. Because like, a lot she, of them have to, to me have she that. is. They have to have that attractiveness too. To me, to she, me she was until attractive. I moved to Asia, and I then I had to shift my whole ten point scale. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Ryan. I was telling Eric. There's this thing called libertarian. Do you know who Jack Lloyd is, Phil? You know who I'm talking. That he's like Jack Lloyd. the philosopher's husband. Does that ring a bell? I know the philosopher, but I don't know. Yeah, so is. it's it's her husband. He does like comics and stuff, but he's started this big group on Facebook. I know you're banned off Facebook, Ryan, but it's called Libertarian Guys with Asian Wives. And for some reason, it never clicked that. Oh, wait, Ryan, uh, he fits in that group, too. So, so does James Corbett. So does like all of us over here. Yeah. And so does Pug. <laughs> so does like... <laughs> Lots of people. <clears throat> but there's a song even by white nationalists that says the Asian girls were the hardest part. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That always is funny when, you know, half native American, Asian white, uh, Asian wife, you get all the white nationalists, you know, it doesn't really, you know, it's ridiculous. Like that's a, it's just cause I will talk to whoever, you know, and they're like, well, anybody you talk to you're associated with, and you just must believe everything they believe. Right. Did you listen to the conversation? Because that no. <laughs> yeah, 
That's why Ron Paul agrees with Giuliani on everything because he debated him. Yeah. Right. And McCain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he All right, McCain, Eric. I know, you're, I know you're falling asleep there, well, Eric. So no, I'm not like, yeah, I'm just, you know, we're, fuck, it was, it was a long, I got a long question. day. <laughs> the body, or I guess I should say the mind, the governor of what he thinks oh, yeah. about uh, Taylor Swift. What, what's Jesse Ventura think yeah, about that? What do you that, think, Eric? Jesse Ventura? Well, I like Taylor. I wish she was around when I was inaugurated. She would have played my inauguration with Warren Zevon. <laughs> he did Werewolves of London. <laughs> He did Werewolves of London, and, and lo and behold, he was singing about Rosie O'Donnell. I had no <laughs> idea about that. I didn't know that's what he was singing about. But Taylor says, shake it off. She sings about her exes. She would have done very well in wrestling. She could have written some of my smack talk against Vince McMahon, who sometimes is an honest man, but is ultimately a villain. Vince McMahon. Best heel in wrestling. <laughs> Eric had people rolling with laughter down at the conference this weekend. And the, the Ventura impersonation is my favorite because you got to get into it. You like start rocking and shaking your head. The rocking. Bit, you, know, it's like... <laughs> you do, you do pre med, pre shake. And you, you cross your arms like that. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I've taken some chairs to the head. Okay. <laughs> Joe Rogan said he took ivermectin. I've taken chairs. Okay? I have chair immunity. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's fun that was that was kind of the overriding theme i mean that's what i do with everything people just we gotta laugh i like more. the trump one yeah we have to we have to laugh more and keep swinging for the fences yeah and i would i would i would just say that donald trump is a very big fan of phil labont and all that remains okay because all that remains of the contents <laughs> excuse me all that remains of the contents of my safe right now are a couple of coupons from McDonald's <laughs> Moscow that those deep state cocksuckers didn't get, okay? And I was promised backstage passes to an All That Remains show, and Phil said he was going to come play Mar-a-Lago, and he didn't do it, I would have, okay? I would, Phil, I would definitely Phil, go. will you come to Mar-a-Lago and bring All That I would, Remains? I would absolutely play Mar-a-Lago. Okay, I, I guarantee... I would play, but we would probably have to find someone to fill in for guitar because our guitar player hates Donald Trump. That's okay. We can, Bar Baron can do it. Baron's very good with the online. He could do rock band. He could do rock band. All that remains. You could do a binga banga bunga. We could fill up there with the microphone, scream about the deep state, and I think it'd be great. Phil, I'd love you in my cabinet. Secret beautiful. Secretary of Heavy Metal, Phil LeBon. It'd be unbelievable. <laughs> You're, fu you're uh, fucking uh, awesome, Phil, man. Thanks thanks for coming on with us, dude. Next time Thank you're in Japan. Uh, uh, I, next time. When, when you uh, want to come to the future. So I've been in Japan. I want to real bad. Last time we were in was 2015, and the time before that was fucking 2011 when the fucking goddamn earthquake happened. Yeah. Oh, wow. We were there while yeah, it happened? It fucking, or right yeah, after? it was fucking freaky. No, it was there when oh, it wow. happened. March 11th. It was scary. Yeah. yeah. Were you there? Did you live there, Ryan? Uh, yeah. Was there? Uh, all, uh, <clears throat> fucking scary shit. So, I'm anyhow, uh, there were bodies why, washing what, up on the beach. Where do you live? Bus full of kids. I was in Nara at the time, but we are actually going up to Ibaraki, which has got hit by the flood worse than Fukushima. And yeah. so we we brought rice and water and stuff up there, caravaned it up there, and um, I actually worked with a church and did that. But yeah, I wasn't prepared for some no, of the things that happened later. Because yeah. it was just, I, it was a freak. It wasn't a normal earthquake. So a lot of earthquakes are side to side. This was up and down. It's like a one in a, mm -hmm. once a thousand year type of thing. Yeah. And the wave, I mean, it's instantly like 20,000 people dead, just like that. Yeah. It's like, I heard that was like, it was, it was a it was tremendous like loss of life. Worse than a naked Pelosi. I was going to say, 20,000 people died instantly. Who was living there? John McCain and Henry Kissinger? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was Sendai. Well, we had these idiots the like Alex Jones it. showing the wave charts, being like, there's radiation going to California. I'm just making infotainment out of it. I'm like, you, you, were, you were at a base shit. there, Phil, in Japan? Uh, no, I was, we were playing shows. We were, we were uh, in Tokyo when it happened. So, like, we didn't, we had just, just gotten off the fucking bullet train, like, Two hours earlier, and, and I, if I understand correctly, the, one of the at least one of the trains derailed, and a lot of people died uh, oh, back wow. when it happened and stuff. So, I was, uh, we were, I was sitting backstage. The band was on stage doing a um, 
sound check. I was sitting backstage and it started shaking. And I was like, whoa. What's more I metal like, than okay. a giant tsunami earthquake? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, nothing at all. Um, and our tour manager stuck his head in and he was like, yo. And I was like, yeah. But like, and I was thinking, I was like, this is okay because there's no one right now freaking out. And this is Japan and they build their buildings to take this stuff. Like, this is like, they, this is normal for them. Like, they get earthquakes and blah, blah, blah. And then a Japanese guy comes and shoves his fucking head in the door and he's like, yo, we need to fucking go. And we're like, oh, fuck, we're going to die. You know? Yeah, when you see Japanese <laughs> like I, people panic, it's time to panic. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, shit. So we're wow. fucking hauling ass. Get out. Everyone's well, out in the streets, the, you know. The commercial of people in Los Angeles, there's an earthquake and they just, and then, uh, like there's like two drops of rain and they're all running around. What do we do? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and they're trying to open Jeez. the umbrella. How do you work this? <laughs> it's like when Georgia gets an inch of snow and they shut the highway down for three days because no one knows how to drive in it. That stuff's hilarious. Well, they don't have the, they can't salt the roads and, and pave it. It's not worth it to hold that yeah. stuff. Every you can year. drive in an inch of snow, at least if you're from, you know, a cool state. So. Not one, not one of those southern ones, you know. Those. <laughs> you want to put chains on your tires and live on the ice? You can do that. You know. I hate the ice. I hate the snow. You weren't based enough to live in sunny weather, and you got forced <laughs> to live up with a bunch of Yankees. You can do that. <laughs> All right, Eric. Why don't you give us your plugs? Uh, don't you have uh, a big guest coming up? Or I don't know if you're already talking about that yet, but. What on Jackman Radio? Yeah, congressional guest, I believe. I do. I was shit talking him on the show here a little bit earlier, right or no? Who the hell? Who are you talking about? Isn't Ro Khanna coming on your show, or oh, you oh not? no, that that's 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 cloakroom at this point. Right oh, now. okay. That's, I didn't know if that was that's cloakroom. Um, no, I no, that's there's nothing scheduled there. But you know, I, I have to try to talk to more liberals or Democrats, and he's on my radar. Sure. I, I will talk. I can to get you, Khanna. David Irving. I will, I will, I will talk to Ro Khanna about his time with Matt Gates and see if they cross state lines. I don't think they did, but um, yeah, Jackman Radio on all platforms: YouTube, subscribe to our channel, uh, Instagram, Jackman Radio, uh, Twitter, all that good stuff. We're on Podbean. If you like what we do, become a patron: Patreon.com/slash Jackman Radio. Ryan, I know you're on a new uh, platform now. What, what's up yeah? With that? Well, I'm banned on all that stuff he just said. I'm not allowed on Patreon or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or YouTube or any of that stuff. But as of yesterday, I started with Cozy TV, which Nick Fuentes is on. We don't really see eye to eye, but it doesn't matter. It's free speech. is free speech. Um, I think he actually would see eye to eye with me a lot more than he thinks. He doesn't know my positions, but yeah, I'm not into that ethnostate crap or anything. But yeah, Cozy dot tv slash dawson i'm also on odyssey i'm back on rumble and vk which is like the russian facebook and of course telegram telegram has been popping off yeah we're doing well they you, and there are people banned on it but it's not from telegram it's from governments like rt got banned number. yeah NATO. yeah yeah japan's not banned on anything so fortunately i'm allowed to see everything which is good Yep, cozy.tv slash Dawson. And we're going to be, I'm going to be showcasing some films there this week, talking a lot about September 11th because it is coming up on the anniversary of September 11th. And uh, not the kook stuff, the serious big boy grown up stuff, not the airplane deniers or, or any of that jazz. They're the worst. All right, Phil. I, I know Phil that remains everywhere, right? Yeah, basically. Uh, on Instagram, I'm Phil that remains official. Uh, but yeah, fill that remains and, and you'll find me. All right, guys. Well, thanks for doing this tonight. It was good. I know we're a week late. Thanks everyone for waiting on us. Uh, like I said, I went to hell and put a bunch of fires out with John McCain. So I'm, I'm back here now, but, um, I will be doing a bunch of shows this week. Uh, Pete Quinones returning to the show on Thursday. Nice. That one's going to be exciting. Uh, I think I'm going on liberty lockdown this week he, by the way you guys got to subscribe to liberty lockdown he's fucking blowing up right now i think he gained like a thousand <laughs> youtube subscribers today just from he's got video. judge knapp once a week now huh yeah that's awesome for him man and he might have a deal with the blaze so Ooh. he's he's getting up in the world so go check out clint liberty lock pod on twitter liberty lockdown everywhere else and yeah we will see you guys on the next show